ಶ್ರೀಗಣೇಶಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಸರಸ್ವತ್ಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುದೇವಾಯ ನಮಃ ಸಮಸ್ತ ಜನ ಕಲ್ಯಾಣ ನಿರತ ಕರುಣಾಮಯ ನಮಿ ಚಿನ್ಮಯ ದೇವ ಸದ್ಗುರು ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ವಿಧ್ವರ we will share screen now and chant those famous opening uh, mangala charan or uh, mangala shlokas um and we'll also since we have some time chant the sumiran which is a favorite certainly one of mine om varna naam artha sangha naam ರಸಾಂ ಛಂದಸಿ ಮಂಗಳಾರೌ ವಂದೇ ವಿಕೌಂಕರ ವಂದೇ ಶ್ರದ್ಧಾ ವಿಶ್ವಾಸ ಯಾಭ್ಯಾ ಪಶ್ಯಂತಿ ಸಿಸ್ವಾಂತಸ್ಥಮೀಶ್ವರ ವಂದೇ ಬೋಧಮಯ ನಿತ್ಯ ಗುರು ಶಂಕರ ಯಮಾಶ್ರಿತೋ ಹಿ ವಕ್ರೋಪಿ ಚಂದ್ರ ಸರ್ವತ್ರ ವಂದ್ಯತೆ ಸೀತಾರಾಮಗುಣಕ್ರಾಮ ಪುಣ್ಯಾರಣ್ಯ ವಿಹಾರಿನ ವಂದೇ ವಿಶುದ್ಧ ವಿಜ್ಞಾನ ಕವಿ ಕಶ್ಮಳ ಕಪೀಶ್ವರ ಉದ್ಭವ ಸ್ಥಿತಿ ಸಂಹಾರ ಕಾರಿಣಿ ಕ್ಲೇಶಹಾರಿಣಿ ಶ್ರೇಯಸ್ಕರಿ ಸೀತಾ ನೋಹಂ ರಾಮ ವಲ್ಲಭಾ ಯನ್ಮಾಯಾವಶವರ್ತಿ ವಿಶ್ವಮಖಿಲ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಾಸುರ ಯತ್ಸತ್ವಾದೃಶೈವ ಭಾತಿ ಸಕಲ ರಜೌ ಯಥಾಹೇರ್ಭ್ರಮಃ ಯತ್ ಪ್ಲವಮೇಕಮೇವ ಹಿ ಭವಾಂ ಬೋಧೇ ಸ್ಥಿತಿರ್ಷಾವತ ವಂದೇಹಂ ತಮಶೇಷ ಕಾರಣ ಪರಂ ರಾಮಾಖ್ಯಮೀಶಂ ಹರಿಂ ನಾನಾಪುರಾಣ ನಿಗಮಾಗಮ ಸಮ್ಮತ ಯದ ರಾಮಾಯಣೆ ನಿಗದಿ ಕ್ವಚಿತನ್ಯತೋಪಿ ಸ್ವಾಂತ ಸುಖಾಯ ತುಳಸಿ ರಘುನಾಥ ಗಾಥಾ ಭಾಷಾ ನಿಬಂಧ ಮತಿ ಮಂಜುಲ ಮಾತನೋತಿ ಭಾಷಾ ನಿಬಂಧ ಮತಿ ಮಂಜುಲ ಮಾತನೋತಿ ಹರಿ ಓ ಜೋ ಸುಮಿರತ ಸಿಧಿ ಹೋಯಿ ಗಣನಾಯಕ ಕರಿ ಬರ ಬದನ ಕರೌ ಅನುಗ್ರಹ ಸೋಯಿ ಬುದ್ಧಿ ರಾಶಿ ಸುಭ ಗುಣ ಸದನ ಮೂಕ ಹೋಯಿ ಬಾಚಾಲ ಪಂಗು ಚರೈ ಗಗಿ ಪರ ಗಹನ ಚಾಸು ಕೃಪಾ ಸುದಯಾಲ ದ್ರವೌ ಸಕಲ ಕಲಿ ಮಲ ದಹನ ನೀಲ ಸರೋರು ಹ್ಯಾಮ ತರುಣ ಅರುಣ ಬಾರಿ ಜನಯನ ಕರ ಉಸೋ ಮಮ ಗುರಧಾಮ ಸದಾ ಕ್ಷೀರ ಸಾಗರ ಸಯನ ಕುಂದ ಇಂದು ಸಮದೇಹ ಉಮಾಗನ ಕರನ ಅಯನ ಜಾಹಿ ದೀನ ಪರನೇಹ ಕರೌ ಕೃಪಾ ಮರ್ದನ ಮಯನ ಬಂಧೌ ಗುರು ಪದ ಕಂಜ ಕೃಪಾ ಸಿಂಧು ನರ ರೂಪ ಹರಿ ಮಹಾಮೋಹ ತಮ ಪುಂಜ ಚಾಸು ಬಚನ ರವಿ ಕರ ನಿಕರ ಚಾಸು ಬಚನ ರವಿ ಕರ ನಿಕರ
Okay. So a hearty welcome to everyone again tonight. If you're joining us tonight for the first time, we are seeing life lessons from Dosi Krita Ramayana, Ram Charita Manas. And yesterday, the life lesson that we focused on was about balance of thinking, balance of mind. What was that? If our mind is balanced, then there will be no obstacles to doing dharma. And if we do dharma, well, then all auspiciousness, prosperity, highest good, peace, joy for others, all that is at your doorstep. It comes knocking on the door. Even if you don't want it, it's going to come. From doing what? Dharma. This was the life lesson that we investigated yesterday. Now, I would like you all to participate in just one question, right? Think back this week to one tiny decision, one decision that appeared tiny, but in retrospect was not so tiny. Think back over the week. One decision when you made it, it seemed like a small thing, but looking back, it was no small thing. Once you have that in your mind, uh, if, if you like, you can put it in the chat. Let's just take 30 seconds, one minute to do this. Either it's hard to think of or hard to write. <laughs> it is a good exercise to do um, even after satsang. It is, gives tremendous insight and it will give insight for our discussion today. In, to lay out that life principle, I started by pointing out the samatvam that was there in Tulsidashti's mind. Samatvam means what? Samatva means balance of mind, equipoise, calmness, not being a partial to one side, biased, samatva. And Dosidashi demonstrates this. This is a little bit of a recap for those who have come today or those who forgot about yesterday, right? Dosidashi demonstrates this by um, saying more than one time in the beginning of his Ramayana, that Siya Rama Maya Sabajagajan. I understand this whole universe to be Sri Ram. Therefore, I do pranams. Now that can be understood from the highest level, but I was mentioning yesterday that that can also be understood from a very practical, applicable level. And that is that in and through all things, good and bad, there is every opportunity for us to grow, do dharma, and receive all blessings of the Lord. So, Tulsi Rashi demonstrates that by doing pranams also to all the things that we find to be terrible. And he takes out a special, some special time, like, like one whole uh, doha and set of chaupais, just to do pranams to wicked people. <laughs> He feels that, and he doesn't have rose-colored glasses. Eh? In that section there, and I only uh, quoted one or two lines last time, but you can go back and see that this is around after Doha 4 or 5, right, in Balakand. He's listing out there. He doesn't have rose-colored glasses in the sense that he sees very clearly what a wicked person is. In fact, you won't find any better description anywhere else. I'm sure that somewhere along the line, one of these Hollywood directors checked this very section in order to create Darth Vader and Voldemort and all these terrible characters. He is very clear about what wickedness is. He goes so far as to say that even though I have done pronouns, I do not even expect their nature to change. He gives a nice example there. Even if you feed milk to a snake, you're not going to make him less poisonous. Even if you treat 
uh, feed milk to a crow also. After all of that, he'll still seek to eat meat. Wicked people are like that. Their nature doesn't change so easily. Yet, he feels that if I don't do pranams to them, I have left out a very important part of Shriram. Really? Even wicked people have a place? That man who deliberately cut me off and honked on me, he also has a place? Yes. So much so that um, in Tulsidashti's balanced mind, he feels that this world would be totally missing something if he wasn't there. Now, how does he come to that conclusion? That member, that conclusion is a balanced mind, right? He said a nice thing. He said that Brahmaji has mixed very, very nicely into this universe, good and bad. And that is a nice um, one chow pai, uh, one doha to keep in mind. You know, you can mark it there on your paper. They'll just sing that right now. This is doha six. See this one line. He says it twice. Above, he also says it's mixed. And here he repeats again. We can sing together. Shri Ram Jaya Ram Jaya Jaya Rama Shri Ram Jaya Ram Jaya Jaya Rama Jada Chetana Gona Dosha Maya Biswakin Hakara Tara Shri Rama Santa Ham Saguna Gahahi Paya Pari Hari Bari Bikara Shri Rama Sagai Shri Rama Jaya Ram Jaya Jaya Rama Shri Rama Jaya Ram Jaya Jaya Rama Jara Chetana Guna Dosha Maya Biswa Kinha Karatara Biswa Brahmaji He has Karatara done something He has Guna and um, Dosha He has made them suffused in all sentient and insentient things And it is only those of us who have a balanced mind he says, Sant, Mahatma Log, Log, that can do what? Can, like the Hamsa bird, extract what is good and leave what is bad. This is that wonderful Doha. Brahman, for Tulsidashi's understanding of this world. In other words, you know, you have to put it like this. There are some really good things that would never happen if we didn't have wicked people. For instance, if there was no Ravana, then we wouldn't be here today singing Ramayana, correct or not? My Acharya had told a wonderful example that really hit home for me I'd like to share with you. That this universe, has both of the pairs of opposites built within it, good and bad, sadhu, asadhu, wicked people and good people, right? How? Just like if you study the magnet. You know the magnet in school? If you remember, one side is blue and one side is red, right? And if someone says, no, I don't like the red side, the negative side, I don't want it. And they decide, let me cut that magnet in half and throw away the red side. Think now, immediately as that person cuts it, what happens to the blue side? If you remember your rules of magnetism and all that, you will remember that immediately that blue side suddenly gets a negative pole and a positive pole, correct or not? And like that, you can keep cutting in half. No, 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 I don't like this half, this half cut that again. You'll get another pair of opposites. Cut it again, cut all the way down to the molecule and the atom. You will find there's a positive and a negative, a proton and electron. In other words, positive and negative make up this world. And if you try and remove one, 
You can't even imagine a world. There is so, so it's more than just saying that if we don't have, Ra, if we don't have Ravana, we'll never have Ra. If we don't have Ravana, we would not even have a world. No Gurudev, no Chinmay mission, no nothing. They are both part and parcel of the world. And unless you have both, you don't have a world. This is the kind of vision. And you can take any one of the negatives that you see in life and just do a, what Socrates used to call a thought experiment, right? And you can go in and, and see, is this really true? Unless all negative things are still here? See, so, suppose somebody says, I want to remove all disease and illness from the world. So much coronavirus and this and that. Let us just make an effort as human species, all, seven billion of us and remove all disease and illness. Think about, play that out now in our mind and let us see what will happen. You won't need hospitals, first of all, because nobody is sick. You won't need doctors. You won't need nurses. You won't need medical, medical school. You won't need all that medical equipment. You won't need ambulance. You won't need medical colleges. All these people now out of work then there's no fear of any lifestyle disease. So people can eat anything, um, do anything, not eat also, doesn't matter, no one can get sick. Then also no one will die. Then also no one will be frightened enough to come to spirituality. Now just if you start thinking, the proposition becomes more and more untenable. You can't even imagine a world where there isn't sickness. If you carry that example further and further. So like this, I had said yesterday that really all of what we call the pairs of opposites are really neutral, but I didn't explain that statement. And today I wanted to add a few thoughts to that, right? What do we mean by neutral? Because they're not the same. One is hot, one is cold. One is good and one is wicked. And they're poles apart. So how are they neutral in this sense? Both of them have equal opportunities for us inherent in them to contribute to our lasting joy and happiness and prosperity. There is just as much opportunity in every single situation. Getting a good job and losing a good job, both situations offered the exact same opportunity for dharma and moksha and everything else. So in that sense, they're neutral. And, and the other side also. Getting a good job and losing a good job have both in them opportunities to allow us to lose prosperity, lose lasting um, opportunities for lasting happiness, uh, create more impurity in our mind. Both situations have both equal danger and equal opportunity. So from that point of view, every single situation is the same. And that is, a, that, that is what matters to us. How the situation comes to us, you know, uh, under the guise of something bad or under the guise of something good, really speaking, they carry the same thing. And this is what we saw last time. Uh, Tulsidashi named all kinds of pairs of opposites, day and night, we saw. <laughs> day is good, but it tires you out. Night is where you have all nisichara. Nisichara means <clears throat> all those who move around at night is a word for the for the um, bad guys, let us say, right? But night is also when we get rest, when we're meant to sleep. And like that, there is good and bad in all things. Okay. He adds also, you know, vairagya and attachment. Raga and vairagya. Both of these have good and bad in them. Really? 
even something so high as dispassion has a danger in it? Yes. See, there are some people who become dry, dispassionate people or not. Then that dispassion becomes a problem for them. Then on the other side, you can say raga, attachment, that is good, sangha. What is good in that? Sangat sanjayate kamaha. Kamat krodho bijayate. Krodat bhavati sammohaha. Sammohat smriti brahmaha. Smriti brahmshad buddhinashaha. Buddhinashat pranashati. The ladder of fall is given there in Bhagavad Gita. Right? After, sang, after dhyayataha, after meditating an object, comes raga or sangha, attachment. So we say, no, no, no. Bhagavad Gita says there's nothing good in attachment. But only when we make mistakes will we have an opportunity to learn, isn't it? The immature ones, they need to go out there and take a little beating. <laughs> then they realize, ah, ha, ha, this world, you need to reflect on it. You can't just go out there willy-nilly. We grow more in adversity than we do in times of comfort. In other words. So yes, if we didn't have Sangha, we wouldn't have spirituality. Oh, all things have these benefits. So the job of human life, of our life, is what? The work is, we have to take every situation that comes to us and draw out the positive for our life and for the benefit of those around us. And for that, we need a mind that can look at the situation and not react, not become repulsed. Re um, don't find it repulsive and run away and get frightened. No, no, no. I see it as a bad situation, but I can keep my mind there and see also the good in it. That is called a uh, balanced mind. That is the hamsa bird manifest in your own mind. That hamsa bird, you know, you take milk and you water it down. That thing becomes like, yuck, who wants to drink that? repulsive but the hamsa bird can is a mystical creature that can just drink that and extract only the milk and don't think it's something unimaginable our body also does that we drink milk and we stew the water isn't it and we keep the good so the hamsa bird can do that right there and leave the water right there it doesn't have to go through them. Anyways, so sadhus are like this. Those who are, have samatvam are like this. If we do not develop this quality, what happens, I told yesterday, then we have a big, big obstacle in front of us. That is the obstacle of a biased mind. That biased mind only can see good in some things, and it can see only bad in other things. Therefore, it's always running from some and running towards others. And if we live like that, the guarantee is that we will only ever reach the destiny of the other beings who live like that, which are the animals. They run from the hot, I was saying, into the shade. They run from the rain to cover. That is what they do. They don't see any joy in being in the rain. Mm -mm. <laughs> means all the land animals. They run. So they don't ever have the destiny of prosperity because of that modus operandi. And if you look out in the world, we are following that same rule and we also don't have too much prosperity and abundance, or, or rather you say lasting prosperity and abundance, right? See, we look out into the world. You know, just the other day, real story, um, one of my family members started their car and they had problems starting it. And when they looked under the engine, the whole thing was full of acorns. One squirrel saw, uh, found that the, that could access from underneath the engine and found this a perfect place to hide all the acorns for winter. Maybe we're going to have a very cold winter here in Ontario, right? So that means to say what? The animals have that urge. Acorns are good. Hoard, save, collect, keep, hide. 
Human beings any different? Prophet is good. But the human being has the intellect. So he said, I don't need to just look for acorns. I can look into anything and find the profitable aspect. Atom has energy, turn it into nuclear energy. I was telling yesterday. Now people can't eat sugar, no problem. Let us look for the sweetest fruit, monk fruit. And let us extract all the sugar from that and sell it. And I'll make a monk fruit empire. So I'm doing that. And at the same time, there's another fellow there who's saying, where are all the up and coming com companies? They're interested in hostile takeover. So after working so hard and amassing wealth and selling all my product, then someone comes and takes it. And as a human species, we have any prosperity and abundance for all? No, we have nice language. Dog eat dog world. The animal only. Animalistic approach. But the saints and sages go on telling that living like that will end up back at square one. You know, here in, in, in uh, the greater Toronto area, we have something square one. The shopping mall. You'll be back at square one. So what we have to do instead is stay right where we are let those negative, what are so-called negative situations come and with a balanced mind, peer deeply into it and draw out the good, draw out the dharma, right? Okay. And like that, there are many different examples. You know, I had wanted to share one with you, another real story. Some, and all things you will find, some fruits are all like mango. When they're ripe, you peel it and eat and enjoy. Right? So it is what we call good, easy to enjoy. Then some fruits are like jackfruit. Even if that fellow is ripe, you can't eat it off the tree. You have to cut it. Then there's so much milk and it's sticky. Then you have to peel it. Then you have to peel it again. You have to get to the inside of that. Peel off that thin skin. Then you have to cook it. But in the end, what you get? For those who like jackfruit, man, that is amrit. Right? You could not find that anywhere else. But you have to go through that pain to get it. So we look and say, there's no pain in mango and there's so much pain in jackfruit, but there's pain in mango also. Because when you're done one delicious mango, most people say, ah, you can't get more than one good one in a bunch, especially in Canada. One good one you might get. Now I have a craving for more mango and I have to spend $5 of mango to try and get one. See, the pain is there. What is the pain? Craving. So both have good and bad. It's just some, the good comes before, some the bad comes before. Okay, I think this point is now very clear. <clears throat> Sri Ram, Bhagavan Sri Ram is the epitome of a balanced mind. And he's given you couldn't design a more difficult situation, I was telling yesterday. Couldn't even design one. Here you have, it's not, a, it's not like you have a painful situation or some extra cold or extra heat or anything like that. Here you have an individual who is a family member, not just family member, a mother who is now going to um, deliberately cause pain and harm and division in the family. And it is life and death, I was telling yesterday, because Dasharaji Maharaj is not going to survive this. Now what you have, you have a balance, hamsa, in the form of Sri Raghunanda. Sri Raghunandana. And then you have here a wicked person. And they are going to meet what is going to happen? How, now who's going to, uh, who is going to matter? <laughs> who is going to end up being relevant? How will Bhagavan Sri Ram with his balanced mind take this most unimaginable difficult circumstance and see in it good and respond also? That is what we have to see. That is the example that Bhagavan Sri Ram came to demonstrate for us. So we will, um, now sing these verses and then think and analyze and get the ideal of Bhagavan Shri Ram. Then afterwards, 
we'll see the next topic and it's connected to this also. So um, let me give a little bit of the background. This will be on page 406 of that uh, PDF that we shared yesterday. If you don't have it, we'll share it again today. But if you scroll to page 406 of that, this is just after Doha 40. Just after Doha 40 in Ayodhya, Kanda. Um, Chao Pai number three. We'll start singing. We'll just sing the whole section and then we'll see it. What is being said just above there? Let, let me tell you, right? Kaikai Maha has already told Dasharachi Maharaj what she wants for these two boons. She has also already told Bhagavan Sri Ram. Now, Dosidashti, before telling how Sri Ram responds, he gives some description. He says there that her words were harshness itself. In fact, her words would have melted harshness. <laughs> even if harshness could come and be personified there, he would say, hey man, I'm not even so bad. <laughs> and her personality was heartless dispersonified. Now Bhagavan Sri Ram is going to meet the greatest test of his life so far. Up until now, Kulaguru uh, Vasishti Maharaj was always there to give guidance. And um, his father was always there also, sitting on the throne. But Kulaguru is not there at this moment. And Dasharji Maharaj, he has fallen to the ground and he can't get any words out. Now Bhagavan Sri Ram, for the first time, has to handle this situation on his own. And it's not like he has a lot of time. Kaikai Ma is impatient to banish him. Impatient she is. What he, did he do? How did he respond? What course of action did he take? That is all seen now in this wonderful section. So I have, I have the verses here. Right. Let us sing these wonderful lines here. <clears throat> How's that tune now? Mana musukai bhana kula bhano rama sahaja nanda nidhano bole bachana Vigata sabadu shana mridu manjula janu baga vibhu shana sunu janani soi sutu bada bhagi jo pitu matu bachana anuragi tanaya matu pitu Toshani Hara Durlabha Janani Sakala Samsara Munigana Milanubi Seshi Bana Sabahi Bhanti Hita Mora Shri Rama Tehi Mahapitu Ayasu Bahuri Sammata Janani Tora Shri Rama Bharatu Prana Priya Pavahi Raju Vidhi Sabha Vidhi Mohohi Sarman Mukha Aju Jau na jau bana ai se hukaja Prathama ganiya mohi mudha samaja Seva hi arandu kalapattaru tyagi Parihari lehi bishumagi 
Deu na pahi asa, sama uchu kahi. De kubichari matu manamahi. Amba eka dukha mohi beseshi. Nishata bikala nara nayaka deki. Tori hibata. Pita hi dukha bhari, hoti pratiti mohi mahatari. Rao dhira guna udadhik agadhu, bhama hi te kachu bhada aparadhu. Jate mohi gna kahata kachurau, mori sapatha tohi kahu sati bau. Sahaja sarala raghu bara bachana, kumati kutila kari jana shri rama. Chalai chonke chala pakra gati jadya pisalitu mata shri rama shri rama jaya ram jaya jaya rama shri rama jaya ram jaya jaya rama Okay, now this is one of the most difficult pairs of opposites you and I will meet in our life. A wicked person deliberately coming in our way, that to a family member. First thing, in the Doha there, just after the Doha, Tosidashi writes, Mana musukai bhanu kula bhanu. In his mind, that Lord of the universe, the son of the solar dynasty, he just smiled. <laughs> Hearing this great, terrible set of boons, Bhagavan just smiled in his mind. Rama Sahaja Ananda Nidhana. Ram is Ananda Swarupa by nature. He is happiness itself by nature. Now, the saints and sages go on thinking, why the Lord smile? One point very simple is that, hey, his joy and happiness and dharma does not depend on whether a conducive situation like the um, kingdom and the Abhisheka all happens, or if it doesn't, first point, right? Balance of mind. His joy does not depend on this situation. Second point. Right? And he will tell other reasons himself. Right? So we'll skip those and you'll see what Bhagavan Ram himself says. But also you can say that the Lord smiled in the sense that this is no big problem. <laughs> because, you know, when someone comes to you and they say, oh, ho, ho, I have the most terrible of problems, you know. I have lost my brand new glasses and I spent $1,500 on them. And that person looking at you, or you're looking at that person, I mean to say, and you see they have the glasses on their head. Then you realize this person is finding such big, big problem. And there's no problem here. So you smile. Very simple in Bhagavan. As far as Sri Ram is concerned, this is a very simple problem. So right away, you can tell he's not all riled up. Then, Bole Bachana. Bikata Sava Dushana. He spoke words that were free of any um, imperfections, Dushanas. They were Mridu, Manjula, Janu Bhaga Bibhushana. They were sweet words, agreeable words, as though they were ornaments to speech itself. Now, this is very poetic language, right? But in order to, I feel, to get the impact of it, we have to know what is an ornament to speech? What is, what is perfect speech and what is imperfect speech? The sign of a balanced mind 
the flagship sign, <laughs> I feel, of a balanced mind will be one's speech. What are the dushanas? You, you know what imperfections in speech are, right? When someone is telling harsh, cruel things, raising their voice, right? Or if their face is aggressive and angry and all that kind of thing, the eyes are burning. You know, they portray this very nicely in movies and all that. That is uh, speech with imperfections, right? Then there are some people who, even if they have to sell you uh, something that is not nice, it still sounds very pleasant to hear, you know? Suppose, and, and so there's, and there's other people who, even if they try to tell you, and they have good news also, man, that thing burns when you hear it, right? Like, suppose someone gives you the wrong, you give someone the wrong address and they have to go far out of their way and they were in a rush and finally you call them and say, how, how did it go? Now that person has to tell you. They say, well, you know, you sent us on a very scenic route today, but we didn't have the time for it. Ah, how nice it sounds. They deliver that message, but it sounds sweet. And then on the other hand, you, you, you say you gave the perfect address to someone and they get there also. And they come back also, and everything is fine. And then you ask, how did it go? And they say, well, you missed out big time. <laughs> so they make you feel like you missed out now. So even a good thing also, they make you feel bad. So Bhagavan Sri Ram's speech had no imperfection, meaning to say, you have to imagine his face was uh, pleasant as he's speaking. His words were soft and sweet. You wanted to hear more and more. And Bhagavad Gita talks about this, anudvega karam bakyam, et cetera, right? So like that. Then in the next Chaupai, sunud, what did he say? Sunud janani soi sutta bharabhagi, jopitu matu bachana anuragi. First off, he says, Janani. Janani is the word reserved for our birth mother. And Kaika is not his birth mother. But what does that mean to say? That means to say in Bhagavan Sri Rama's mind, he has not created any division. For him, this is his mother only. And when you call out Ma, that word itself melts the heart. Listen, O Ma. And you have to see, she's not acting like um, which mother will banish their own son for their own benefit. But he calls her Ma. Means even her actions could not remove his identification with her as mother. What does he say? Indeed, blessed and fortunate is the son who can be obedient to his mother and father and follow their wishes. This is the line he's bringing out. In his balanced mind, he's looking at the situation and ah ha ha. Blessed is the son who can follow the mother and father's wishes. He continues. Tanaya ma tu pitu tosha nihara durlava janani sakala samsara. In this world, it is very, very difficult to find a son who pleases his mother and father. The idea is, Bhagavan is meaning to say, I have an opportunity now to please my mother and father. Please his father? Dasharji is on the ground. He doesn't want this to happen. But see it from the other way, you know? One point, Shiram knows. How can my father look at me and tell me I have to go to the forest? He won't be able to do it. But I will not cause him any kind of sadness or embarrassment or anything like that, right? He doesn't need to worry. He doesn't even need to ask also. So in this way, I'll please him. Then, second point, I'll fulfill my father's promise. Because a son's duty or a child's duty is to relieve or fulfill or reduce the debt of their parents. This is their job. Any kind of debt. That is called 
um, putra. And he'll please mother? Well, yes, this is her, what she's asking for. Then he adds to that now in the Doha. I will, not only that, I see another special thing about the specific request of going to the fourth. I will reach and meet many great sages. And when you meet so many great sages, what will you do when you meet them? You'll have satsang. And satsang is the most difficult thing to get in this world. The whole world is wired up to have you do, be doing something else at this time. I am sure all of you would have to, had to turn down something or more than one thing to be here today. It is the most difficult thing to get and it is the source of all auspiciousness in life, satsang. And I will get so much of it. So this is a great benefit. And then he adds, tohi maha pitu uh, ayasu bahuri sammata janani tora. And most of all, right, this is my father's command and this is my mother's wish. So from any point of view, when Bhagavan Sri Ram looks at this situation, he is looking from my dharma, this is good for me. Then he adds another point now. He, he goes on reflecting and the more he uh, adds the more plus points he sees. Bharatu pranapriya pavahi raju bidhi sabha bidhi mohi sama mukha aju. Bharatji, who is dear to me like my own life, my own pran, he will become king. In fact, when Bhagavan Sri Ram uh, first heard about this whole coronation sister, he was thinking in his mind, you know, I don't like this. It is not right that the eldest brother has to take the throne. We have all grown up together. Why I should get the throne? That was his thought. Now that also will get solved. He, Brahmaji has been favorable to me in every possible way, he says. Then he adds now, it is not just this has some pluses or this has a few benefits that I see. He rivets the idea. In the next Chaupai, Jo Najau Bana Aisehu Kaju Pratama Ganiya Mohi Mudha Samaja. In the in the Mudha Samaja, in the assembly of fools, Pratama Ganiya, I will be counted first. If what? If I do not take this up, if I do not go to the fourth. I will be rank position number one among fools. And then he adds, when we say fool, let me tell you what is a fool, right? Sevahi arandu kalpataru tiagi. You know that person who decides to serve and you means tend to a castor oil plant instead of, an, of getting the kalpataru, the wish fulfilling tree. That kind of fool. Or, Parihari, Amrita, Lohi, Bishu, Magi. The person who gives up Amrit, life-giving nectar, for poison. These, among these fools, I will still be number one. Now, now this is something to, to think about. He adds one point there. Teu napai asa samau chukai Deku bichari matu mana mahi. He says, they also will not give up on such an opportunity of going to the forest. Think, O oh mother, in your mind. So these examples deserve a little bit of reflection. You know, what are the two? Wish fulfilling tree, kalpataru, versus the cast castor oil, you know. That's what they use to make laxatives. <laughs> so this person is thinking, let me give up the wish fulfilling tree. I'm going to open a laxative business. That is where I see all my benefit. Such a person is a fool or not. And the other one, well, I told. Uh, and if you look at these two examples, one of them is giving up something 
that is belongs to the devas for something of this world, right? Kalpatru belongs to the devas. Amrit belongs to the devas. And the castor oil plant, and well, we have different, many different types of poisons you can drink here, right? People say also, what's your poison? So you trade that. In, in other words, even someone who gives up uh, such a great heavenly joy would not give up this boon, following up on this boon. I will fulfill your wish. I will fulfill my father's wish. I will have satsa. Bharat will become king. This is how he's seeing the situation. Then he adds, but, O oh Amba, eka dukha mohi biseshi. There is one special dukkha, O oh mother, that I see. Nishata vikala naranayaka deki. Seeing the king helpless lying on the floor there. Torihi bata pitu pitahi dukkha bhahi. For some small thing, my father is getting such. Great, great dukkha, dukkha bhari. Hoti pratiti namohi mahatari. I cannot believe it, mother. This Dasharachi Maharaj, he adds, Raudhira guna udadhi ugadi. He is strong and a veritable ocean of good virtues. Every little good virtue is there in him. Really, he cannot be, he's building up. He cannot really be so sad for such a small thing like me going away. There must have been something, uh, some great offense that I have done. Bhada aparadhu. Because of which, jate mohi na kahata kachurao. This king, this, uh, my, my father, the king is not speaking to me. Uh, uh, swear on me, oh mother, tell me the truth. Is there something that I have done? Now, Bhagavan is really saying he cannot, he does not see this as a big deal at all. This is a small thing. And in fact, it is so obvious to him that a trouble, a, a trouble has come, but the, the, there is nothing but blessing if we respond to it correctly. Is that a small, small little problem? So Sudashi adds one nice last line there. The mind of Sri Ram and his words meets the mind of Gai Gai. He says, Bhagavan Ram's words were sahaja, natural, sarala, simple, and uh, ragubara bhashana. His words were so simple. There's no agenda, right? And Kumiti or her Kumati Kutila Karijan. But her evil mind, her twisted mind, took those words as being crooked. Just like the leech goes on the water, and when it, even if the water is very smooth, Samana, that leech takes a crooked path. Even if there's no obstacles, he also. Bhagavan's spontaneous, natural, simple speech, straightforward speech, she couldn't understand it. She was not clear what he meant. She was not uh, clear what he was thinking. She didn't know what he really meant because her mind was like a leech. And uh, even if everything is plain and flat, it can't go straight. So this is the comment. Now, this section goes on and on. And if you're like me, you feel like, don't stop, don't stop. What happened next, right? But we are seeing topics, right? So let us think a little bit now about this section, right? Bhagavan Sri Ram is thinking to himself now that here is an opportunity for me to do dharma, to please the world. And anytime I can relieve someone else of any burden, especially my parents, right? I must do it because it is a rare blessing. It is a rare blessing from the Lord itself. Just come in my, I just have to unpack it by following up on that opportunity. 
and and I will get blessing. And if I do dharma, everyone will get blessing. Right? Then I'm also seeing in this situation, there's going to be benefit to others. Uh, my brother will get benefit. Bharatji, who's my pran. And it doesn't matter that in this whole thing, it came because someone was being selfish. That is not of really speaking, you know, between us. That is none of our business. My business is only what my position is, what my dharma is, how I can take any situation, even if someone brings a self, they're being selfish and use it for the benefit of everyone, including that individual. Seeing the situation like this, Bhagavan is saying, I am going to be top among fools if I do not act correctly and get all the benefit that is just lying just below the veneer of this selfishness. Right? So this is how he's seeing the situation. Some people have issue with it, you know, because we cannot see how what Bhagavan Sri Ram is doing is dharma. I don't know if that question is there in your mind. So let us just look for a moment and see. Why is leaving the dharmic thing to do? Right? Well, one mention I mentioned already. Whenever you, first let me take a step back. Whenever we think about what is dharma, we must see first, what is our status and position? Dhar, uh, duties come to us according to our status and position. Just like, I use this example all the time. You know, if you get on the bus and you're sitting in the first position, just as you enter the door, right? And then someone enters. And what do they say? Uh, and someone else enters and then they fill up the whole bus, right? Now you have a full bus and you're sitting in the first position. And, and then finally, a pregnant woman enters and is standing there at the front holding on to that you know, pull there. By virtue of your position and status in the first seat, do you not have a greater duty than the fellow at the back of the bus to give up your seat? Yes. By virtue of what? By virtue of your status and position in the first seat. In the same way, if you look at your own life, you will see you have a status and position as father, employee, citizen, member of a community, neighbor, uh, sibling, on and on and on. And therefore you're in a unique position to do something. So Bhagavan is saying, I'm son. I have a unique position to help my father. Therefore, looking at my own status and position, I can see what is my dharma and how I can use this situation to bless everyone. How it came is none of my business, really speaking. This is the kind of thinking. Next point, how is this dharma? If Bhagavan does not go forward on this boon, then it will be seen that the king had a um, promise and he reneged on it for love of a family member, right? And he is the king. So anyone thereafter who makes any promise, any business deal, or promises to pay someone, or does do anything, they can say, no, no, I don't have to fulfill it if it comes in the way of their family's benefit. And if anybody questions them, they'll say, well, Dashraji did it, and he's the king. So Bhagavan Sri Ram is protecting his father's uh, Rajya kingdom by following the boon. So two points, right? Third point, from the point of view of a sadhaka, well, of course, the general person would love to be in the kingdom instead of in the wild forest, and dressed also in the vesh of a tyagi. No shoes, no possessions, uh, every day subject to the elements and mosquitoes and wild beasts and sticks and tarantulas. It would rather be in the kingdom. But to put my personal likes and dislikes aside and do what is best for everyone is the work of a sadhaka. And really speaking, unless there is sacrifice, one cannot do dharma. So from the point of view of a sadhaka, also dharma. Now, the most important one I feel is also, uh, or not the most important, but a wonderful point. In Kaikai's mind, there has become division. She has divided her mind now. It's no longer one unit, family unit. There is my son and Kausalya's son. 
separate. And um, if Ram gets kingdom, well, then she is first among queens and I am over here. But if Bharati gets kingdom, then I am first. So she has divided the family. Prior to that, in her mind, there was no division. She herself told Mantara, what are you talking? He's like my own son. At the beginning, when they first started, she first started listening to Mantara. Now, if Bhagavan Sri Ram stands up against Kaipe, that division which is in her mind will spill out into the whole family and it will split the whole uh, Ragu dynasty. Correct or not? Because now you have half and half and they're at odds. But because of his choice, he kept that whole dynasty together. So for the upholding of the whole um, Ragu dynasty, this decision made sense. And on and on and on and on. You can go on seeing that this is really no problem at all. This is dharma. Okay. Now, how did Bhagavan get his mind to be so balanced? And he, he wasn't even disturbed by all the difficult situ situations that would come. He wasn't, he, you know that he didn't see. Bhagavan Ram knew that if he left, Dashraji would not survive that. But how did he keep his mind balanced and see what is the right thing to do? Because many different reactions were possible. You know, if it were you and I, you know how many different arguments we can make? Anybody was, anybody was around when Dasharachi gave you these two boons? Okay, okay. Because he, he gave it on the battlefield. Anybody was around? Can you prove? She, she won't be able to prove. But everyone was around when Dasharachi promised me the kingdom. So he promised me something and he promised you some, something. How, how come your promise is above my promise? Like that, you can go on making... So this is how teenagers argue or not? <laughs> so you can make so many arguments. Dasharji was not in his right mind when he gave you his promise. On and on and on. But Bhagavan Ram didn't use his intellect to fight for running towards joy and away from sorrow. He used that, he demonstrates for us how we should use the intellect to search and find what is dharma. How was he able to do that? It was because that mind was balanced from the beginning, right? Okay. Now, how are we supposed to keep our mind balanced? It was a wonderful question from after yesterday's talk and had shared that just satsang alone helps because in this time we sweat in peace so we don't have to bleed in the war of samsara first point the next point is that we which is from today we use the examples the ideal and we inspire ourselves there is a wonderful verse you know that summarizes this whole section we teach it to all our bodily heart children I will just chant, many of you will be already knowing, I'll chant that for you. Prasanna tamya nagata vishekataha tatha namam levana vasa dukkataha mukham bujashri ragunandanasya me sadastu samanjula mangala prada. That verse is saying, that may the um, Ragunanda Ragunandan, Nasya uh, Mukham Pujashri, may that um, lotus face of Sri Ram, his face alone, may that bless me. Which face is that? That face would remain prasanna, prasanna right? remained with prasannata means contentment. When he was told he was going to get the Abhisheka, and when he was told he was going to get um, Banavas. In both circumstances, he didn't smile extra, and he didn't make a bigger frown. His face remained that same face we see in those Murtis. May that face, which is so balanced and calm, bless me. 
with um, sweetness and mangala, auspiciousness. So remembering the face of the Lord, his sweet words, how he responded, seeking the benefit of everyone, even the wicked person, and therefore kept the whole rajya together. May I remember that when I meet any wicked person and someone cuts me off on the road and all that. So the ideal. And the more and more we study this, we reflect also. We transpose this very conversation into our lives. Is this an opportunity for me to do dharma or not? Is this an opportunity for me to please the world or not? Can I remove the burden of others or not? Is this going to, especially my parents, who will benefit? Is it my duty? Am I in this position? Then I'll act on it. And there's, this is a, a gift from God. That kind of thing. Right? Okay. Now, Bhagavan Sri Ram was ha the epitome of balance. For him, balance was sahaj, natural. But in our life, <laughs> balance is not natural. There is something which comes in there all the time that we're born with. And when we look at a situation, it makes us biased. And the ideal is the natural. And the, we, well, the more we study it, the more we become like that, right? But in our life, not, natural, not natural means what? Means we always now have to make an effort. We always have to make a choice moment by moment. So what we'll see next is all about, and you'll see on the poster, the next topic is how to face fears and deal with life's mistakes. Right? Face fears means what? The reason why we cannot keep balance is because we are afraid of the consequences that might happen if I act on this. I want to run away, in other words. Or we're afraid of making a mistake. Or we have made a mistake in the past and we're afraid to tell anyone. Or are anxious about something. All this bears down on the mind. So the next satsang is all going to be about choice. That same Bhagavan Sri Ram, who is the epitome and handled this situation in his life, wherever he goes, whoever invokes him, he comes to help you with that very situation. See, um, I don't know if you can, I'll just give a hint now. I don't know if you can guess what tomorrow's satsang will be on. But our Bhagavan Sri Ram goes now and he meets another family who is having another feud. <laughs> and there is the antagonist who is wicked at heart and doing all kinds of adharma. And then there's the protagonist who has to face that situation. And he's not balanced. He is very afraid of facing. He's afraid of what he might lose. He might lose his life. He's afraid of making mistakes. He is a scary cat. But he's good at heart. The mind doesn't have balance. He is good at heart. And now this situation keeps coming in front of him. And he cannot lift himself up to be balanced and face it. He's afraid of the possible cause. And he very well might die facing it. Bhagavan Sri Ram comes into his life and supports him and helps him. He's the very epitome of handling this situation. And so this protagonist, he will do something to bring Bhagavan in his life. And Bhagavan will stand from behind and help him. You might already be knowing. You might say, that sounds like Arjuna and Krishna. Because Arjuna saw a situation then he got frightened. He was afraid of what he might lose. It was a family feud. Then Lord Krishna was Ram only, and he came there to help him by teaching. That would be right if you said that. But here, this is Ramayana satsang. So it has to be something from Ramayana. And there the, the help was via teaching. Here the help is of a, of a demonstration. We will learn how we can face those fears and still follow the example of Sri Ram by holding onto his feet and getting his help and what the consequences of are, are of running away and on and on. 
So those who can guess that, congratulations. And those who cannot, well, you'll have to see that tomorrow. <laughs> we'll close and um, pick up where we left off tomorrow. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishate Om Shanti 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 Arihi Om Shri Guru Bhyo Nama Arihi Om Okay. If there are any questions.